How was your weekend? How was your weekend? Because LeBron's weekend was awesome. And the Lakers weekend was really damn impressive. Starting with Friday night, LeBron, 37, 8, 8, and 3 steals. And a lot of defense on Giannis in LA's 10-point win over Milwaukee. Then on Sunday, 28, 7, 9, and defense on Kawhi in a 112-103 win over the Clippers. So I guess what I'm saying is, Laker Nation, car flags up! Yes, there is still plenty of work that has to be done. No, they have not won Jack yet. But you do have my permission to slap a few additional flags on your sled after yesterday's win over the Clippers. I mean, that really was a hell of a weekend for the Lakers and for LeBron. You beat the team with the best record in the league on Friday night. You come right back and you beat the biggest threat in the West on Sunday. And in the process, you turn their home court into your own house. And if you wanted to call the Lakers the team to beat today, I'm not going to stop you. This weekend was that big of a statement for the Lakers, for LeBron, and for his crew. Of course, I would remind you that playoff basketball is a different animal than regular season basketball. I'm not looking for a hedge here. I'm just saying. Playoff basketball is different than regular season basketball. And nobody really cares about being the team to beat in early March. The only thing that matters is you're the team who beat everybody in June. But they did send a serious message. The team did, and LeBron did. LeBron clearly wants it now as badly as he ever has. To me, he's playing as well now as he ever has. I could even argue he's playing better, given how he's led from the front and made everybody around him so much better. And not just because he always makes the best basketball play. Or the right basketball play. Not just because of his play on the floor. I'm making this argument about LeBron because he sets the tone for everybody else out there. Like when you have a 35-year-old man, 17 years in, preparing at that high level, working at that high level, performing at that high level, and doing all the little things and all the dirty work himself, like taking charges and hitting the floor, if you play with this guy and you see all that, How the hell do you not do those same things if you're his teammate? So yes, this guy's making everybody around him better, both on and off the floor. You know, the things that MVPs do. He probably has too much ground to make up to run down Giannis and rip that award right now. But while I have seen a younger and more explosive LeBron, I'm not sure I've ever seen a better or more effective LeBron. Because he was the best player on the floor in two games against the two other alleged best players in the game. And frankly, it wasn't even that close. And against the Clippers, he didn't really have his A game. And yet he was still the most dominant force on the floor. Diving on the floor for loose balls. Locking guys up defensively. Setting up his teammates. Again, how the hell is any of this possible at age 35? Absolutely nobody with his brain or his ability to play at this level at that age with all those minutes on his legs. I mean, it really does defy all belief. It defies all logic. And speaking of defying things, how about Frank Vogel and what he continues to do with this team? Nobody gave this guy any respect when he was hired. He wasn't the first choice. He wasn't the second choice. It was just a matter of time, remember, before he got fired and an assistant took over. And all he's done is come into a team with a lot of new faces, get on the same page defensively in a hurry, get them on the same page, and then lead his team to the best record in the West and maybe make them the team to beat. Just because he's made it look easy doesn't mean that it is, because it's not. He's not just rolling the ball out there and letting the players go to work. That's a mammoth job, a mammoth undertaking that he's making look easy, but it's not. So put some respect on that guy, too. He's a big reason why the Lakers are where they are right now, but nobody's saying it. And then the best part of yesterday's game to me was the fact that most guys on both sides were saying before that game that it's just not that big a deal. It's just another game. It's not that big of a deal, which was a lie. They know it. They wouldn't have shown up like that if they believed that. That was a huge deal. The intensity was through the roof. That was a playoff atmosphere. That was a conference finals or NBA finals atmosphere. You know what else that was? That was supposed to be the game where the Lakers got exposed. 
Less than 48 hours after facing the Bucks, they were facing a Clippers team that was deeper, tougher, and definitely more physical. And they'd already beaten them twice this season. This was supposed to be the moment where Clipper fans finally got over on the Lakers and where they could say, yeah, you got the better record, but we've beaten you three straight times and we're undefeated with our full lineup. And given that we're 3-0 against you and no one else has beaten you twice this season, there's no way in hell you beat us four times in seven games. Not when it matters. That's how Clipper fan assumed it would go. But a few minutes into that game, it was clear the Lakers were not having any of that. And there was no hangover from Friday night's win over the Bucks. How did I know? Because I saw Avery Bradley locked in. I saw him strip Pat Beverly, score, and then let Pat know about it and get teed up for it. That was a tone setter. And Bradley was a monster. Anthony Davis was huge. He played with a physicality that let the Clippers know this was different. But Bradley was a beast. He had 24, and he had six threes. So if you were looking for that number three, last night, that was your number three. And if you didn't know before the game that it was different, you knew then. And if you thought before the game that it was a Clippers home game, it didn't take long to clear that up either. That was a Lakers home game on the Clippers floor. Standing ovations for the Lake Show, MVP chance for LeBron. I repeat, MVP chance for LeBron at a Clippers game. It's a rough look for the Clippers. Where were you Clipper fans? What happened? That was the one. That was the game. I mean, come on. You know the deal, Clipper fan. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Instead, it was the Lakers who turned up, and they were awesome. And in the fourth quarter, it was LeBron who took over that game and time and time and time again attacked. He was not going to let the Lakers lose. He was not going to let the Clippers win, just like he was not going to let them lose to Milwaukee on Friday night. This alleged old man was everywhere, doing everything. 